Okay, so I've been working for the past year on rebuilding an Ares wind vane. It's an older model, probably 30 or more or more years old. Uh, the model is a, a standard Ares, or also known as the number three. Um, and I just did this rebuild in between parts of the, the refit for the Contessa. And um, also did it at a time, or at least much of it I did at a time when I was unemployed and did not have the budget to buy the various parts that I, I really wanted or, or needed. Um, so I, I did quite a bit of um, making them from scratch. And I recorded what I could and tried to string together a um, reasonably coherent uh, video. And here it is. Okay, so I've acquired an Aries wind vane for my Contessa 26. Um, I did get this very cheap. I was planning to do a trim tab uh, quartermaster type vane. Um, but being that this came into my life, I'm going to see how this works out. There are some issues, of course. Um, part of the casting here, just the edge broke off. I think that should be okay. I actually had to cut this remains of a pipe that were in there. Um, I'll have to build a whole new uh, mounting for it to go on the transom around the rudder. Uh, but other than that, I need to uh, just replace some bushings in here. Uh, the bearings are missing on that side. And also the universal joint for this is missing. And I'll probably replace the other side, the universal joint as well. And lastly, the piece that connects the bottom of that to the rudder is missing. Uh, there's actually two different types. There's a breakaway and then there's a folding type. If you plan on getting the folding type. So we'll see how this goes. Okay. <clears throat> so in the video I had just shown, which was earlier this year, uh, what I didn't realize was that this wind vane was actually missing a very important part, and that is the uh, shaft and bevel gear that runs through this. Kind of goes like that. But I was able to finally locate one after several months of searching. I uh, used one, and that's overseas, and hopefully it'll arrive uh, soon. <clears throat> so I've uh, begun to take this part, uh, which is a lot of work. I use the instructions um, on Lean Nellis's YouTube channel, which was a video made by Peter Matson, the former owner of Aries. Uh, Lean is the current owner. Um, and so this uh, entailed um, using a torch um, and tapping with the small hammer here. To loosen up the corrosion so I can get uh, various parts out. This is the shaft that goes in there. Um, also here, the upper part. I have to do that here. Uh, well, I did have some issues here. Um, these grub screws stripped. So I uh, need to drill those out. But I was able to force this out knowing that I would kind of bend it. I did that anyway, thinking I might have to just replace this. Uh, but I did hammer it out, and that took several hours. Um, then I basically just filed down or sanded down the end that did expand, um, and that worked out okay. This uh, piece here, uh, rather the hole in here, uh, had to be cleaned out corrosion on both sides. Moving on, this lower piece here, the arm, there are some bushings in here. Um, these needed to be popped out. I was able to get a small screwdriver in there, kind of pry it out a little bit, and then I pushed the whole thing out with a uh, socket that matched size. So got those cleaned out. Uh, got the uh, main bearing, or the, uh, the Teflon bearings, these are the original ones, out from in there. Clean those out. There's a little uh, spiral pin that had to come out, and then um, they were glued in, but they were, they were pretty easy to get out. Then there's this piece, this ladder looking piece. 
this was a little challenging because I also, at least on one side, uh, stripped out these grub screws. One of them I was able to draw out already. Um, but this was this was not moving at all, so I had to take out this grub screw here, get this screw out, which was probably the hardest part. Finally got it out, um, then I had to clean out the corrosion in there uh, and reassemble it. There's two washers in there. Um, now that spins nicely. So this is the upper gear made of bronze, which I have already cleaned with the wire wheel. This is the remains of the bearings. Um, I need this one of these is missing, it goes on in, in there. I'm just going to get two new ones if I can. Uh, these are the remains of the bearings that go in here. They're rather in here, inside here. Uh, kind of hard to come try to find these things because Helen Franklin, who uh, retains all of the spare parts for these uh, is no longer responding to emails or phone calls so um, looking at other options these are the needle bearings that go in there and they're just uh, a 1 8 diameter nylon rod three quarters long I was able to buy some nylon rods so that shouldn't be an issue if I'm unable to get some some of these made or something I do have another option I found that schedule 80 pipe which is uh, this gray stuff here this is a three quarter and this is half inch I found that the dimensions are almost identical to these and also the spacer that goes on the outside of this um, this is obviously PVC, so I'm not sure how it'll do. It is paintable, so uh, UV shouldn't be a problem. Um, but if I don't find anything else, I'm going to use this. This should go in there. Um, it might take a little bit of modification, but not much, because it, it's very, very close to the internal diameter. Here. And other than that, I was able to get out the broken pieces out of the mount. Took a lot of heat and time, um, so let's see where this goes. Okay, so I'm going to try my hand at actually making some of these parts <clears throat> for the rebuild. Um, and what I have here is a one eighth nylon rod, so this would be for the the needle bearings, and that should be pretty easy. All I need to do is cut it to size because that's the exact diameter. Um, and then to make the other bearings and bushings, um, really I should have a lathe and I don't have one, but I'm going to try to do a little creative work with a drill press um, to see if I could get this. Uh, this is the, for the lower bearings. Uh, just needs two holes. Uh, the upper bushings basically just needs to be drilled into a, a cylinder. And then those inner bushings that hold the needle bearings, uh, that's going to be the most challenging part. So I'm going to try this and we'll see if it works. And I think I was successful with the first set here. Um, that is this bushing, which goes on the ladder here. Um, and all I did was use this uh, inch and a quarter delvin rod, and I have quite a bit left over because I bought extra in case of mistakes, but I uh, got it right on the first shot. Um, just drilled holes stepwise and, and rounded the edges and uh, fits really nice. Now cut the needle bearings from the 1 8 inch nylon rod, 15 on each side. Uh, the dark ones are actually the original. Um, cutting a little extra so this is kind of uh, hard to cut with a saw because it, it's kind of brittle and uh, it doesn't really cut well best uh, best way to do it I found was to just use a sharp chisel and finally I was able to fabricate the inside bushings that go in here um, and they actually came out really good surprisingly uh, there's a little lip 
on the inside there to retain the needle bearings. Um, and the way I pulled this off was to use a three quarter spade bit. Um, went in, but not all the way. I had it marked with tape. Um, and then a half inch hole on the other side. Um, so a lot of these didn't come out right because they were kind of off center. So these I thought were kind of screwed up. But in the end, the pro these probably would have worked because this is actually not wide enough and I had to go in there with um, a, a rasp and then some sandpaper to get it uh, just the right diameter so that the needle bearings will all fit. But yeah, happy with the way these came out. Next, I made these spacers. Uh, just drilled a half inch hole into the one inch rod. Uh, cleaned it out a little bit to get it centered right. Then cut the angle, which was about 27 degrees. Did two of those. Also made uh, two washers. Um, this is the original. Well, I'm wondering if I'll even need these because um, the function of the washer is just to keep the, the needle bearings inside the bushings. Um, which is can easily be done by the spacers and I noticed that the new rebuild kits uh, From what I've seen from what I could tell in pictures Doesn't even look like they use a washer, so I may even just skip those Here it is dry fitted Spacers and bushings no bearings in there but Works good even without them and hits the stop And here it is fully assembled, at least this component. And as it turns out, I did use a, a washer only on one side um, because there was a small gap there. Uh, I suppose I could just shave down the spacer, put another washer in there, but that's really unnecessary. So I think, I think this will do it. Now I'm trying to make these bushings, which go in here, um, because the ones that were in here, we got were a little damaged when I pried them out. They're actually not too bad, it's just a flange. And they probably would work because these are epoxied in anyway. Um, and what I did was I used some leftover inch and a quarter rod, Delrin rod. Um, here's the closest I came to success and I had a few failures over there. Um, but in the end I think I'm going to um, look elsewhere because I think these are available locally in, in Teflon so unless those do, don't work out I'm going to kind of just shelf this next I'm going to um, address this small broken piece from the casting even though it's not very much uh, and it probably would be fine because that goes pretty deep you know uh, for a mounting tube would go in there uh, and screws from the other side anyway but um, I'm gonna try see if I could um, address that here's a piece of uh, one of the old mounting tubes that went like that um, this seems to be about the same thickness so I'll try to cut a piece off of there and see if I could raise it or if not weld it And it took me two tries. First one didn't hold after I tapped it with a hammer. Uh, second one did hold. 
Um, and now I've ground it down and sanded it, and it looks uh, looks nice and uniform. Shape the inside to make sure it fits, which it does. Um, and I think that that should do it. Um, I'm not going to really try to whack on this hard. <laughs> Um, you know, although it's supposed to be stronger than the parent metal, the, uh, the Luma Weld, I'm, um, you know, I'm not going to tempt fate here. Um, but like I said, it, it, it should, um, it should actually hold pretty well, even without this little piece, mainly aesthetic. So, um, I think that's it. Uh, I'm thinking about, um, refinishing this. Uh, you know, it's, uh, aluminum, so... It will corrode a little bit and, and develop a patina, but uh, I was thinking about maybe maybe painting it with some epoxy paint or something, just to dress it up a little. And here's the completed wind vane all together. Uh, probably still needs a little bit of lubrication, but I've made a um, uh, air paddle here, and just uh, just this one. And as you can see, when the wind hits the air paddle, it turns the shaft at the bottom, which in turn is connected to the rudder. Um, I do not have the coupling that goes between the two. There, there's actually a hinged one now. Um, but other than that, I have the mounting, I card the mounting, uh, pieces for the transom um, also that piece that was missing which is this bevel gear and the whole shaft underneath uh, I did acquire that from England from a used Aries it's actually from the lift up model which is a better uh, version because it's got it's a stainless steel rod encased in aluminum and it prevents it from uh, having galvanic corrosion which is the problem with these with these older units uh, put on a aluminum collar with some stainless bolts. Um, like I said, need to do a little bit more lubrication. Uh, did do put some marine grade grease in here, but the rest is going to get oil. Um, and that should be it. I'm not sure if I'm going to be using the Aries. You know, I did do a lot of work on this, so <laughs> I'd like to, but it is it is quite heavy. It's a very strongly built. It looks like it could withstand a nuclear attack, the damn thing so thick. Um, but, you know, if someone offered me a uh, lighter vein, like a Wind Pilot uh, Pacific Light, I probably would trade. So that's it. All I have, really have left to do, other than that uh, coupling, is to uh, paint or varnish um, the wind blade or paddle that I made um, and then trim it down to be equal in weight to the counterweight um, it's actually a little heavy now uh, and then make a couple extra and that should be it so all done